Well, good evening. I just want to take a few moments with you before we start our Good Friday service. I was reading in the Gospel of John, in John chapter 4, where Jesus heals an official's uh, son. And in that story, we see the father plead and intervene for his dying son. We hear the father pleading really as much as an earthly father would. John 4, 47 reads that when the official heard that Jesus was in the area, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son who was close to death. Jesus intervenes and does not allow the death and heals his son. Really, he tells the official, your son is healed and your son will live. As we come to a Good Friday service, I want to tell you of another story, a story that happens later in John and really all four Gospels of a different father and a son. But this father does not plead and intervene for his son. It is the son who pleads with the father. And on the cross, the son says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In this story of a father and a son, the father does not intervene to stop the death of his son. The father allows his death. Come with us today and listen to the story of the death of Jesus.
Jesus was very popular with the crowds of people in Jerusalem. The chief priests of the temple felt their authority slipping away and became very jealous. They were looking for a way to kill Jesus, but they didn't know how they could arrest him without starting a riot. But one of Jesus' disciples, Judas, became a traitor. As a disciple, Judas knew all the places that Jesus usually went. He could lead the chief priest to the Jesus late at night when he was away from all the crowds of people. That way, they could arrest Jesus without causing a riot. Judas went to the chief priest and told them his plan. They liked it and paid Judas a large sum of money, about four months' wages, to betray Jesus. The day had come for the Passover meal. The Jews celebrated Passover as they had for centuries, with roasted lamb, unleavened bread, and bitter herbs, and four cups of wine. Jesus made plans to celebrate with the twelve disciples that he had named as apostles. Jesus sent them into Jerusalem to prepare a traditional Passover meal, and he joined them that evening. Then Jesus did something that surprised everyone. He got a towel and a wash basin and began to wash the feet of each of his apostles. When it was Peter's turn, he didn't think it was right for Jesus to be washing feet. People walked around in sandals on the dusty roads, and it was the job of a servant to wash the feet of a guest when he came into a house. But Jesus was not a servant. He was the master. Peter said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't know why I am doing this, but you will understand later. Peter was not convinced and said, you will never wash my feet. But Jesus said, unless I wash you, you will have no part of me. So Peter said, then wash my hands and head as well, Lord. of love can still be seen on your hands and on your feet we feel your heart your heart of grace heaven's gates opened wide you have raised us up to life we breathe again this mystery nails to a cry
the shadow of the cross we see our shame for what it was and feel your heart your heart of grace we see your power breaking through all that we've become in you we breathe again this mystery up from Jesus knew that Judas would betray him, and he would be crucified the next day. It was not only, not only Passover, it was Jesus' last meal with his disciples, so it was a very special occasion. As Jesus and his disciples were eating, Jesus again surprised and upset his disciples. He said to them, Truly I tell you, one of you who is eating with me will betray me. All the disciples looked around and said, Surely it is not I, Lord. Peter asked Jesus, Who is it, Lord? Jesus replied, It is the one I give this piece of bread to. Then he handed the bread to his disciple Judas and said, Do quickly what you are going to do. Jesus left immediately, but most of the disciples did not know why. Then Jesus took a loaf of bread, blessed it, broke it into pieces. He gave a piece to each of the 11 remaining disciples and said, this is my body for which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took a cup of wine, gave thanks and passed it around to the table around the table saying, drink from it all of you. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I will never again drink wine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. After the Passover meal, Jesus led his disciples out to a desert garden called Gethsemane to pray. He prayed to his Father in heaven that he could somehow be spared the agony of crucifixion that he knew he was about to face. But above all, he was determined to complete his earthly mission. He closed his prayer by saying, My Father, if this suffering cannot be avoided, your will be done. Jesus often went to Gethsemane with his disciples, and Judas knew this was the perfect place to arrest Jesus without attracting attention. The chief priests and elders of the temple sent an armed mob along with Judas. Judas told the mob he would identify Jesus by giving him a kiss, a common form of greeting at that time. Now Judas arrived 
with the mob sent by the chief priests. He went up to Jesus, kissed him, and said, Greetings, Rabbi. This was the signal for the mob to take Jesus captive. Peter, wanting to defend Jesus, drew his sword and cut off the ear of the high priest's servant. But Jesus said, Put away your sword. All who take to the sword will die by the sword. Don't you know that I could ask my father and he would send legions of angels to protect me? But the scriptures say it must happen this way. The mob grabbed Jesus and took him to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest. But all of Jesus' disciples ran away in fear that they would also be arrested. Judas betrayed Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, the mob took Jesus to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest. Peter had vowed that he would never desert Jesus, but Jesus said to him, 
Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. All of Jesus' disciples ran away in fear when Jesus was arrested, but Peter followed at a distance and came to the courtyard of the high priest. Three different people recognized him as one of Jesus' disciples, but Peter strongly denied it each time. Then a rooster crowed, and Peter remembered what Jesus had said. He felt very ashamed and began to cry. The high priest, all of the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were waiting at the high priest's house. This was an informal late night meeting of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish ruling council. They had come together to put Jesus on trial, but it was not to be a fair trial. The religious leaders were looking for evidence that would justify putting Jesus to death, but they couldn't find any. They called many witnesses against Jesus, but the witnesses couldn't agree with each other. Finally, the high priest demanded of Jesus, tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus replied, I am, and you will see me, the Son of Man, sitting at God's right hand and coming back on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest said, you have just heard his blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? What is your verdict? They all shouted, he deserves death. Then they spat in Jesus' face and began to beat him. In their mock trial, the religious leaders had agreed that Jesus should be put to death, but they did not have the authority to put anyone to death under Roman law. So as soon as the morning came, they took Jesus to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. They falsely accused Jesus of treason under the Roman Empire for claiming to be the king of the Jews and for urging people not to pay their taxes. Pilate saw that Jesus was not guilty of anything and wanted to let him go, but Pilate did not want to trouble the religious leaders. He asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my followers would have fought to prevent my arrest, but my kingdom is from another place. It was the governor's custom to release one prisoner at the Passover feast, anyone the people wanted released. The Jewish leaders knew this and had persuaded the crowd of people gathered around Pilate's house to call for the release of a criminal named Barabbas and to demand that Jesus be crucified. Pilate asked the crowd of people, which do you want me to release? Barabbas or Jesus? The crowd yelled for Barabbas to be released. Pilate asked, then what should I do with Jesus? And the crowd yelled, crucify him, crucify him. So Pilate ordered the Roman soldiers to crucify Jesus. Walking on the road to Jerusalem The time had come to sacrifice again and My two small sons, they walk beside me down the road The reason that they came was to watch the land They said, Daddy, Daddy, well, what will we see there? There's so much that we don't understand. And so I told them of Moses and Father Abraham.
And I told of Moses and Father Abraham. Then I said, dear children, watch the land. When we reached the city, I knew something must be wrong. No joyful worshipers there, no joyful worship song. And I stood there with my children in the midst of angry men. Then I heard a crowd cry out, Let's crucify him. such agony. In that moment I felt such loss. Until a Roman soldier grabbed my arm and screamed, Yo! Carry his cross. Forgive them. Never have I seen such love in any other eye. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. He prayed. And then he died. I stood for what seemed like years. Lost all sense of time. Then I felt these little hands holding on to mine. My children stood there weeping, and I heard the oldest say, Father, 
please forgive us the land ran away Daddy, Daddy What have we seen here? There's so much that we don't understand So I took them in my arms And we turned and faced the cross And I said, dear children Watch the Crucifixion was a cruel form of death reserved for criminals and slaves. First, Jesus was beaten by the Roman soldiers. Then he was made to carry his cross uh, to the place of execution. Jesus must have been too weak from the beating to carry his cross all the way. The soldiers forced a man named Simon of Cyrene to carry it the rest of the way. The cross was placed between two other men that were being crucified that day. The soldiers nailed Jesus to the cross and left him to die. They put a sign on the cross to mock Jesus that said, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. About noon, strange things began to happen. Darkness came over to land for three hours. Then Jesus cried out, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And then he died. The curtain of the temple was mysteriously torn in two, and there was a great earthquake. It was Friday afternoon, and the Sabbath would start at sundown. It was also a very special Sabbath because it was the Passover. The Jewish leaders wanted all the bodies to be buried before the Sabbath started because they were not allowed to do any work on the Sabbath. One of Jesus' followers, a man from the town of Arimathea named Joseph, went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. He took Jesus' body and hastily put it in a new tomb that had been carved out of the rock. He rolled a large stone in front of the tomb to seal it. As we close, we just, uh, today we fight a pandemic, a pandemic that has led to many deaths, not just nationwide, but uh, worldwide. And death can be a hard topic to talk about and a hard situation to go through, especially when a loved one is involved. Well, for the Christian, the death of Christ was necessary because of the pandemic of sin that each and every single one of us suffers from. Sin that separates us from a holy God, sin that keeps us away from a holy God. Sin doesn't just socially distance us from God, it eternally keeps us away and severs our relationship with him. See, our sin nailed Jesus to the cross. God placed our sin on Jesus so that we may be forgiven. Jesus died a death that you and I deserved. Jesus took our punishment and paid the penalty of death that you and I deserved. See, in the story, the father did not intervene during his son's death because his son's death leads to our forgiveness and our eternal life. As the father in John 4 intervened because he loves his son, God didn't intervene because he loves us even more. Paul writes in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, that God demonstrated his love towards us in this way. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In the song that we played and you probably sang with in the, uh, after the introduction here, Come, O Sinner, it says this, Come, O Sinner, come and mourn, for he calls your sin his own. Do you feel the weight of justice served? He suffers the wrath that you deserve. Come, O Sinner, come and mourn, for he buries the curse for all you've done. Oh, the wonder of this awesome scene where our Savior bleeds. Oh, the power of the love of God, come and stand in awe. My prayer for you today is to come, O oh sinner, come and see, and come and see the one who died for you. Come and see the one who died. Come and see and be forgiven at the cross of Christ. Oh, say 
secret head now wounded with grief and shame weighed down now scornfully surrounded with thorns thy only crown how Safe to me, thy grace.